What's up, everybody? Thank you for coming to another entrepreneur video. In today's video, we're gonna tell you how the homie Victor right here is making four thousand dollars with his ATM business. But of course, you know we're gonna show you the good and the bad. But Victor, you ready to get started? I'm ready. Let's do it. Let's do All it, right. man. So, for the people that don't know you, tell us about yourself and your business. Yeah, yeah, like you mentioned, you know, my man Reyes mentioned, uh, my name is Victor. Some of you guys may follow my ATM business um, YouTube channel, Celebrating Victories. I post, you know, I think I have over hundreds of videos on there talking about how you guys can start your ATM business real simple, easy stuff like that. Um, right now, I currently have about, what, 13 ATMs. Uh, so I've been in the business for a couple years. So I really enjoy just helping people out, you know, so that way they could try to start their own ATM business and, you know, make some passive income, make some money while, you know, they're doing things that they like to do and not have to work so, so hard. Um, and that's pretty much it, man. That's what I've been doing now for a few years. And now you're actually jumping into helping other people start the ATM business, right? Yeah, man, I'm laying it all out there. Everything that I know is in the course. You know, I wanted to make it something that's simple, something that's easy, something that's easy for um, them to access, something also that they can access me if they have questions. So, um, you know, let's say they're out doing something, they're out bolting down an ATM or whatever. Maybe they're out, you know, trying to find a location. They can simply, you know, hit me up. Hey, Victor, this is what I got going on. What you, what you think, all right? They can watch the videos. They can, you know, go through step-by-step -step instructions, have all the resources that they need as far as who to contact, as far as support to contact as far as where you're buying your ATM, your ATM um, internet modem, um, you know, links to the equipment that's needed. I wanted to lay it step by step, A to Z, to the point where if I gave this to my mom or my mom, if I gave this to my kids when they're older and I said, here you go, this is how you start an ATM business, they'll be able to do it on their own. That's how I wanted to make it. And that's how it's going to be. There you go. We're going to have some information in the description below, but let's get started with your first ATM. How did yeah. it go, man? Yeah, my first ATM, I, it's crazy because it's not actually in that location anymore. But my first ATM I got because, and here's a little quick tip for you guys that are starting or already have an ATM business or just starting and looking for a location. You always want to go to the spots where um, you already have built rapport with. So if you have like a laundry or um, if you go to like a laundry mat, you know, every week, or maybe you have a barbershop that you go to, maybe a salon that you go to, and you talk to the owner, you talk to the people there, you want to go contact those people first because you already have some, some rapport built up with them. You have a relationship with these individuals. So that's what happened to me. I went to my barber, well, actually not my barber, but the, the barbershop that I go to, I went to him first. Um, and I talked to the owner. I'm like, hey man, you know, this is what I got going on. I presented him the, the, the opportunity of getting an ATM in his barbershop. And that's how I landed my first location. He said yes, because you know, I would go in there weekly. I would give them money, obviously weekly because they're cutting my hair. So I was a client of theirs. I was somebody that was already supporting their business. So it was more likely for them to say yes, versus just kind of going in somewhere that you've never been in. And it was a little bit more harder. So that's how I got my first one. I got you, man, but you just mentioned it's not there no more. So what, nah. you had to break his heart, Victor? I had to break his heart, man, yeah. So that that's a tough part, you know, especially when you build relationship with these individuals, because you're going to be going in, you know, weekly, every other week, you're going to go in monthly, you know, just to talk to them, hang out, you know, fill up the ATM, whatever it is, right? So you're going to build that relationship. Um, so with him, with that individual, I had it in there for a couple of years. And <clears throat> the main reason why I didn't take it out sooner was because he was my first one. And I, you know, I had that relationship built up with him. I didn't really want to break his heart, but I noticed the transactions kind of taking a dip. So there was one point they were doing like 40 transactions a month. And, and that just wasn't enough for me and my goals as far as what I want for each ATM that I have. So I told him like, hey man, you know, unfortunately I'm gonna, I'm gonna be looking for a new location to put an ATM in, or to put this ATM in just because it's not, you know, it's not making me money. It's not making me enough profit for me to keep it here. Um, so I have to find a new location. And that same day I ended up finding a new barbershop that just opened up within that same week and putting it in there, putting it in there. And then I think last month, that barbershop that I have it in now made like 500 bucks you know, off of the surcharge. So it's it doing really well. And again, that's a brand new location. That that barbershop opened up, what, I think like I had it in there for like two, three months at this point now. And um, yeah, it's doing good. And it's only gonna do better because the, the owner still has seats that are available for him to get, you know, new barbers into the location. So 
what requirement do you need to meet to determine if you're going to keep the ATM there or not? Uh, for me, my requirement is like minimal $200. Like I want to make $200 in profit and that's profit after after expenses, after taxes. So, you know, and, and the expenses, the cool thing about the ATM business, you don't have a lot of expenses, um, especially when you're kind of, you're in it already. In the beginning, obviously you're buying an ATM, you're buying, you know, doing things like that, buying certain stuff. But once you have it gone and it's, it's working every, you know, every month, then like you have your internet modem, if you're doing wireless internet, um, then you have like your profit sharing, if you're giving, you know, profits to a business owner. Um, you may, you know, if you're spending money on maybe um, a new roll of receipt paper, that could be an expense, but that's super rare. Like you have to go through so many transactions before you finish the actual roll, um, receipt paper roll. Um, what else? If you're gonna clean the ATM and you wanna buy those little card cleaners that you slide into the slot of the, where the card goes, you know, that's obviously an expense. Um, gas when you're driving around. So after all that to say, for me, I wanna profit $200 after expenses on each of my locations. There are locations where I'm under that. There are locations where I'm a lot more than that. The locations where I'm under that, the reason why I haven't moved those is simply because I have a really great relationship with these guys and they actually brought me a lot of business. So they brought me other locations as a referral, right? And those locations are booming. So I'm not gonna be like, hey, you know, I'm taking it out. You know, they're gonna keep giving me referrals and hopefully they're good locations as we continue going. But um, all that to say, yeah, 200 is my bare minimum, man. All right, so for the people that don't know, how does an ATM make money? Yeah, man, so um, pretty much, like you go when I, I'm sure everybody's been to an ATM before you put your card in, you enter your pin, say you want to take out 20, 20 bucks, whatever it is that you're taking out. And then they have that surcharge and you're like, then, you know, I got to pay X amount of money in order to take that money out of the ATM. So the owner of the ATM received the surcharge amount. Anytime, you know, there's, you accept that surcharge for you to take out money that's going into the owner's, you know, bank account. So essentially that's going into my bank account. So every single time someone uses that ATM, <clears throat> um, you know, they're, they're the, the $20 that they're trying to pull out the ATM gets transferred from their account. It goes through the system and goes to, comes out of the ATM and then it gets released out of their account. You know, now it's in their hand, it's physical money. At that point, there's a surcharge and then the surcharge gets charged from their account and that goes into my account. And then the money that was recycled that, I, that I'm giving, right? Cause you have to put your money into the actual ATM. There needs to be money in the ATM for in order for someone to pull it out. So the money that's in there, that's my money. I put that money in there. So that money, once they pull it out of the ATM, that just gets recycled along with that service or with the surcharge fee back into my account. And then I you just keep doing it. You refill the ATM and then you collect more surcharge. Refill it again, collect more surcharge. So it's real simple, real simple. Got it, man. Now, when I go to an ATM, it's charging me $3.99, $4.99. Why so much, Victor? It depends, man, because one, that people want cash, you know? There's a lot of cash-only locations out there that, you know, they're only accepting cash. You know, small businesses, barbershops, they only want cash. One, because they don't want to be reporting all their, you know, all their profits to the IRS, because as we know, as we all know as entrepreneurs, you know, taxes suck. Um, and they, they... I, I report on my income, Victor, right? So I don't, I don't know what you guys are talking about. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, man, so cash is out there man people want cash and uh that's why because if if and you're paying for the convenience right because you don't have to drive two miles down the block to go to your bank or if it's further that obviously it's further you know it's going to be further distance that you have to go but you're paying for the convenience of having it right there now there's some locations that you're going to find a surcharge um higher or lower typically for me like i usually put about three 325 is like a good number i've had i have locations where it's higher your locations like tattoo spots um strip clubs uh casinos you know things like that you're gonna have a higher surcharge simply because one their chances are they're probably gonna be taking more money out like i'm not gonna set my surcharge at three dollars if they're trying to pull out four hundred dollars every single time it's not worth it for me to be refilling that for you know so fast so quickly just for that three three dollar surcharge each time so i have locations where i'm at six six dollars for a surcharge you know um so yeah that that's why it's so much because you're paying for the convenience and just like any business you have expenses you know you the person that owns that atm they paid money to have that atm there they have to profit eventually we're not going to give out free money you know have that convenience of just taking money cash out whenever you want without an actual fee 
Got it, man. So you mentioned you have 13 locations. In yeah. your opinion, which ones are the best? Which ones are the worst? Yeah, man, that's a great question. Uh, for me personally, my most successful locations are probably going to be mostly barbershops. So I have a few, but I think I have like six, or five or six barbershops. Um, and most of them do really well. Um, but at the same time, it's not so much about the niche location or the niche business that that's making the most money or which one's the best location is definitely the spot because i've had barbershops that flew and i had to take my atm out of them obviously the one i just kind of talked about you know for my first location and that wasn't the only one I, I had to do it multiple times in different locations so um it's the better question is you know how much foot traffic are you looking for how much you know should you how many transactions are you trying to get in order to keep that, you know, that ATM in that location. Um, but as far as like niche locations, I've had um, tattoo spots, I had barbershops, I had, I even did a comic store one time, which that didn't work out. I've done nail salons, I've done restaurants. Um, man, what else? I've done mechanic shops. I've done you, it man. all, man. I've done a lot of different locations. All right, man. Now, of course, ATM, just like any business, has the good and the bad somebody mm -hmm. actually tried stealing one of your atm machines before <laughs> yeah man yeah i woke Happened. up one day i got a text message um and they said they sent a picture and they said hey someone try to break into the atm so this is at a barbershop and what they end up doing they end up going from the back of the barbershop because they had like an extra door in the back they broke through the back and they stole a bunch of like the the uh, barber's equipment you know clippers and, and whatever you know valuables they could find in there and then they pretty much smashed my atm so that they, they ripped it out they ripped the anchors out of the ground so they, it was anchored down you definitely want to have your atm bolted down so i had it bolted down they ripped them ripped it out the ground they were just beating it you could tell they were trying to like you know open the door the good thing is they didn't get it open you know, they didn't steal any money, um, but they did damage my ATM. So I needed to purchase a new ATM. And then I just, you know, put it back back in there. That was a good spot. So I wasn't, I was willing to take the risk of it happening again because that spot was was so well. Um, it does so well. So it's still there. It's still there. I have a new one, obviously. Um, but yeah, that happened. It pretty much happened. Doesn't happen often. That's the first time it ever happened to me. Um, it's the only time that it's happened, but it's definitely the, the risk of, you know, being in the business. I got you, man. I got you. But Victor, you give a lot of great information. Now, let's say there's somebody out there who wants to start an ATM business. What can they do? Yeah, man. Yeah, definitely. If you guys are interested in the course, what you guys can do is, you, like I mentioned, click the link in the video description. Um, from there, depending on when you're watching this video, it can be, uh, the enrollment can have already opened because it is going to open and it is going to close after a few days after that. So if you're watching it before um, the course actually opens and just go into the video description, fill out, the, get into the waiting list. You know, that way I know you guys are interested. If you're watching it while it's open, you know, just click the link in the video description. It's going to take you to the page. That way you can get into it and enroll. And if you're watching it after, you know, it has closed, then, you know, at that point, just, you know, just be on the lookout for the next open enrollment. Got it. I'll put all the information in the description below. Go check it out if you want to start an ATM business. Victor, thank you so much for jumping on, sharing that knowledge. Yeah, and man. if you guys like this video and want to see more, press the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye, everybody. Bye, Victor. Later, man. Appreciate you.